Hello second grade, so today we're going to start our Native American totem poles where each of us make one part of the totem pole and then I'm going to put them together to make a collaborative totem pole where we all work together and do our part to create one large piece. And you're going to get a packet that has nine different totem pole images, different animals and people that might be found or typically are found on a totem pole and you're going to choose one that you want to do. So you can see that my, my almost finished piece here is this one here, which is the warrior. So what you're going to do is choose one, and I'm gonna choose the fox. And you're gonna look through this packet to find the one that says fox on it. And these are how to draw sheets that walk you through step by step how to do each part of the animal. So there's the fox. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to get a small white piece of paper and I need to write my name in the middle of the paper because we're going to eventually cut these out. So you need to write your name in the center or middle of the paper and the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. You're going to flip it over. And the I have created some patterns. Now, now I didn't create a pattern for every single part of each of these totem images, but the ones that I thought you might have trouble with, I've created patterns for. So the first shape that we need is this shape, and I have that already cut out, ready to go. So you're gonna lay this down on your paper, and it's a little tight, it's pretty, it fills the paper, because I wanted our pieces to be fairly big. So you're gonna trace around this with your pencil, very carefully. And then the next part is the mouth. So I do have that mouth shape cut out. So I kind of want to find the middle and put that, move that down to the bottom like this, how to draw part shows. Next step is the nose and I have that nose shape too. So that's pretty close to the mouth. So I'm going to move that down, trace around that. Now I tried to make the parts that were new a thicker line on the how to draw sheet so that you knew this was the first step, this is the second step because it's the thicker line, but it, honestly you might not need that for reference. So the next thing is the eyes. So the fox has two eye shapes. So one's labeled one and one's labeled two. So the next one is this shape. And since I have a second shape that has to fit and that fits inside, I need to make sure that's in the middle or center of this general area here. So now we do a smaller nose and circles in the eyes. So inside the nose, I'm going to draw another nose just inside a little bit. Then we have the ears. So we have this line that closes off the top of the head and separates it from the ears. And then we have a smaller rectangle inside the bigger one. Okay, and now we have these triangle shapes inside the ears, and then a tongue on the mouth, and then an additional line. So I'm going to start with that line first, this V that goes in the middle of the mouth, and then I'm going to add a tongue and then erase these lines inside the tongue. Then we do the big part of the eye. So basically if I don't have a pattern for the piece that's drawn here, the next step, then you just freehand that. You draw that yourself. Alright, so there's my finished fox. I can put my hand out away and my tag board patterns away. And then since we are going to paint this with watercolor, we're going to use black crayon to go over our pencil lines and you need to press hard because the black crayon is a resist. It'll hold the watercolor back and keep the colors from running together. Um, so it's called a crayon watercolor resist because the crayon resists the watercolor from mixing. So you want to press hard. Now if you don't trace your lines perfectly on top of them with the black crayon, you can't go back and erase those lines because you might smear the black crayon. So just take your time and go slow and press hard without breaking the crayon and trace over your pencil.
Okay, so I have a bit of crayon shavings kind of floating around, so I'm going to shake those off. And so now I'm ready to paint. So you're going to need a watercolor tray, a water basin, and a paintbrush. And I'd like you to limit your color palette, which means don't use every color in the tray. Choose maybe three, four, five colors max to paint in your face. If you look at my finished painted one, I used one, two, three, four different colors, and that's it. So I would say stick between four to six colors for your mask. And also, I think I want to color in the circles on my eyes black. So I like how that looks on my warrior, so I want to do that for my fox. I think it's easier than painting in black, and it also, I think it just ties it together. Okay. So you're going to choose your four to six colors that you're going to use, and you're going to get those wet. And I try to choose some colors that kind of remind me of the colors that I saw in our Native American stories that we've read. But you can choose whatever colors you want. So what I'm doing is getting my paintbrush wet and I'm pulling it across the edge of the oval where the paint is and I'm getting a puddle of water on top of that color. Now when I want to paint, I'm going to just wiggle gently my bristles of my paintbrush, the hairy part of my paintbrush, on the water, gently touching the paint that's underneath. And I'm painting the water, but by gently touching the paint that's underneath and mixing it around, it makes the water change to the color of the paint. And then I just paint the water. And the, if I pressed hard enough with my black crayon, it should hold that paint in there for me fairly nicely as long as I stay just inside there. The face is the biggest part, so I'm going to pick a color that I really like. Take your time and try and paint as neatly as possible, filling in all the white spaces on your totem animal or person. I've ran out of water on this blue-green, so I'm going to put enough, more water on top. If your colors mix or overlap, you just have to leave them. There's nothing you can really do about it. So I touch my orange here, I touch my orange here, and I touch my orange there. And I've been painting a long time, and that just happens. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to get stressed out at, over it or start over or get frustrated. It's just part of the process, part of the artistic process. All right, so I've used three colors so far. I want to limit it between four and six. So I think I'm going to use one color for the remaining white spaces. Um, I wonder if I did. For this, the te I forgot to add the teeth. And that might be a mistake on my how to draw sheet. I'm going to have to go back and look. So I want to add the teeth. So I'm going to carefully use my black crayon. And totems are symmetrical. So... I want to do the same number of lines on both sides. All right, so there's the teeth. I'm not going to paint the teeth because teeth are white. So for the remaining um, eye white, the nose, and the ears, I want to pick my fourth and final color. I'm trying to think of a color that will look good with this. And I think I'm going to go with green. Or maybe I'll go with this yellow-orange here. That's a pretty color. It looks similar to the orange here, but it is lighter. Alright, and so there's my finished totem. All painted in. Um, I know I said I wanted all the white colored in, but if your animal has teeth, let's leave that white. And um, I'm going to set this aside to dry. And then once it's dry in the next class, we're going to cut it out. We're going to cut all this white paper off the edges. And we're go I'm going to tape them together temporarily to create one class totem pole. We might have to create two um, if it gets too tall and it won't fit um, between the floor and the ceiling. And some classes are large enough, we might have to create three totem poles for one class. 
So just take your time and cut around it, leaving the black crayon on the totem and just cutting off the white paper. And the great thing about this is if you go outside the edge of your totem, like I did here, I've got a little bit of blue that went outside, I get to cut that right off and no one knows I made that mistake. And this white scrap can be recycled and there you have your finished totem pole character. Good job.